There's a lot of ways of coming into what kinds of networks are associated with value creation. Uh, this has been a hot topic for the last 20 years, and business has been a wonderful place to study that uh, because usually managers want to create some value, entrepreneurs want to create some value. Uh, they're a little more explicit about it. It's a little more similar across managers um, than would be, for example, an artist wants to create great art, but what that means across artists can vary uh, tremendously, though the same network characteristics associated with a successful uh, manager are associated with the successful artist or musician. People who um, affiliate with diverse other people see different ways of looking at things. Uh, and that means that when I uh, look at a problem, uh, how many different ways can I see it? Uh, so some people, they are very deep in a very narrow slice, and everything looks the same. It's the proverbial boy with a hammer, everything looks like a nail. Um, the more, and this is one of the incredible strengths of being at the Booth School, the more diverse the people you bump into, the more likely you can say, well, I could see it as a sociologist, I could see it as a psychologist, I could see it as, a, uh, as an economist. So the networks that are associated with value are the networks that are diverse and open. The networks that are associated with failure, and it's striking in China, um, uh, East Asia more generally, Europe, the United States, there's this very consistent pattern. The more closed the network, the more homogeneous and tied together the people, the more likely you do pedestrian work. Uh, and that means you're promoted slowly, you're paid less than peers, uh, nobody thinks of you as a leader uh, uh, in, an, in an area. It's pretty much, no matter how you look at performance, um, it's bad for these poor people who live in these little cubbies. It's one reason why, uh, for example, IBM was worried, um, well, this is early on in the, in the 80s, uh, with hiring Asian engineers who never made it up into management. You know, what are we doing? Is it, is it a race bias? But what it was, was these people arrived, they don't speak English that clearly, they feel awkward about it, so they'd seek out other people like them where they could be comfortable, and they never learned how to communicate across differences. So once you, once you realize that, then you just make a change in the program and force them to have a content which is uncomfortable, but it's a little bit like exercising, I suppose. It's not comfortable the first uh, few uh, sessions uh, that you go to.